past nine in the morning on the 31st of October 1984, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi emerged from one Safdarjung Road, her official residence, wearing a saffron sari and a broad smile on her face. She walked towards one Akbar Road, the adjacent bungalow and her office, where Irish documentary filmmaker Peter Alexander Ustinov was waiting to interview her. As she approached the gate, Bian Singh, a Sikh security guard posted there, shot her with his revolver. Another guard, Satwan Singh, also a Sikh, fired a volley of shots from his carbine. A total of 30 bullets hit her as she collapsed. Indira was alive when she was taken to the All India Institute of Medical Sciences just 20 minutes later. She died five hours later. Indira Gandhi, the Prime Minister of India, had been killed by her bodyguards. She had decided not to remove her Sikh bodyguards after Operation Blue Star, which saw her order the Indian Army to storm the Golden Temple to flush out terrorists just months earlier. Finance Minister Pranab Mukherjee, who was later the President of India, quotes Indira in his memoir, Turbulent Years, 1980-96, as saying, Pranab, I know the consequences. Indira's assassination was a revenge killing for the military action on the Golden Temple, the holiest shrine of the Sikhs. The community also blamed her for the death of thousands of Sikhs in Punjab during Operation Blue Star. A day before her assassination, at a public meeting in Bhuvaneshwar, Indira had said she was ready to embrace death in the service of the country. With a sense of foreboding, she had said, And then she spoke about the impact of her death on the country. She said, As a body lay in state at the Teen Murti house, her father Jawaharlal Nehru's official residence, Indira's prophetic words assumed an ominous ring. The last drop of her blood united the country against the scourge of terrorism. Ironically, her words also triggered a frenzied response, resulting in what many say was a pogrom. As the government media repeatedly played recordings of her speech, a wave of violence swept across Delhi and other parts of the country. Mobs armed with sticks, swords and petrol canisters roamed the capital seeking out Sikhs lynched them and burned them alive in India's worst communal carnage since independence. Nearly 3,000 Sikhs were massacred in Delhi alone. For three days, anarchy ruled Delhi streets as heads of state arrived to attend Indira's funeral. President Gyani Zail Singh's motorcade too was attacked by frenzied mobs. A Sikh himself, he was in an official tour in the Middle East when Indira was assassinated and he rushed back to Delhi. As Indira Gandhi's body lay in hospital, Congress leaders literally huddled in the corridors of the building to decide on her successor. They decided on her son, Rajiv. They also decided to announce Indira's death only after Rajiv was sworn in as Prime Minister to avoid uncertainty in the country. Rajiv then General Secretary of the Congress and a Member of Parliament was travelling in West Bengal when his mother was shot dead. He rushed back to Delhi in a special plane. He took oath at 6.45pm, after which news of Indira's death was made public. The new government took office but was paralysed for three days. The Delhi police was not in control of the violence sweeping the streets and calls to deploy the army were not heeded. Dr. Manmohan Singh, former Prime Minister, said in 2019 
that the anti-Sikh riots in Delhi could have been avoided had the then Home Minister P.V. Narasimha Rao heeded the advice of Congress leader I.K. Gujral. Gujral, Prime Minister in 97-98, Lieutenant General J.S. Arora, hero of the Bangladesh War, and Patwan Singh, a prominent Sikh writer, had urged the President to deploy the army a day after Indira's assassination. They also met Home Minister P.V. Narasimha Rao. General Arora later said that the Home Minister had been grossly negligent in his approach. On the 2nd of November, the army was called in, curfew was imposed and shoot at sight orders issued. In reality, the effective deployment of the army was made on the 3rd of November after much of the rioting and killings had taken place. Indira Gandhi was cremated on the banks of the Yamuna that same day. Even decades after the violence and bloodshed, most of the political leaders accused of instigating the rioting mobs haven't been brought to justice. Sajjan Kumar, a former Congress MP, is the only senior leader who was convicted. In the meandering search for justice, four commissions of inquiry and two special investigating teams were set up to probe the 1984 riots. The latest team was set up in 2018. It is investigating 186 cases that had been closed. As justice eludes, the wounds of 1984 have largely healed. But the question remains, how did a nation guided and protected by secular and democratic principles descend so uncontrollably and so quickly into a brutal, beastly mobocracy? It is a question that will continue to haunt us.